Today I'm going to show you how to make this geometry node setup that I've been playing around with. Basically uses noise to drive the rotation of these individual squares. And I ended up with about eight different variations. Choose a render engine, in this case cycles, and set up some lighting, in this case just an HDRI. Then I'll create a shape to tile, I'm going to use a flattened cube, then I'll create the texture in the shader editor. Then using geometry nodes, I'll create a grid and adjust the width, length, and vertice count. Then I'll put the flattened cube on those vertices, and then I'll drive the rotation of those shapes with noise. Then I'll make each instance separate to fix the texture, and I'll set the material. Thanks very much to my Patreon and Gumroad supporters as well. Really appreciate the support. It encourages me to make new videos, explore new topics. I'm going to switch to Cycles. Then I'll go to World Properties for an HDRI. Click the yellow circle, then Environment Texture. Then I'll navigate to a saved HDRI on my computer. Next I'll duplicate the cube and multiply it by 0.1 on the Z axis in Edit Mode. If you want there to be bevels on the tiles, you can add the bevel to this object. Then I'll make a quick texture in the Shader Editor. I'm just going to use Voronoi and Noise. This is actually what I made in tutorial number 6. I'm just going to use some color amps for some interesting color. Now we'll use some geometry nodes. With the cube selected, I'm going to open up the geometry nodes editor and click New. And then we'll bring in a new node with Shift A and we'll bring in a grid. I'm going to set the dimensions at something close to widescreen, 3.7 by 2. I want the vertex count to depend on what I set the sizes to. So I'm going to set up three value nodes and two math nodes set to multiply. That way the vertex count is always four times whatever I set the size to. Then I'll bring in an instance on points node. This turns each vertex into a point that I can place an object onto. And I do that by bringing in this object info node, then selecting my flattened cube. Then I attach this geometry output to the instance input on the instance on points node. It's a little large, so I'm going to bring in a transform node and adjust it till I'm happy with it. I'm just going to eyeball it. By the way, if you don't have the texture on these tiles yet, don't worry, we're going to fix that shortly. Next, I'm going to set up some noise to randomly affect the rotation of these squares. I'll bring in a noise texture, three math nodes, the first and the last set to multiply, then a combined XYZ node. Then I'll feed that into the rotation on the instances on points node. I'm going to change the noise type to 4D and put a driver in the W input field. This will increase the W value by a small amount every frame. Then I'll adjust the first multiply and the add node. The multiply node sets the magnitude of the rotations, so the higher this number is, the more rotations. And the add is going to set a bias. For no bias, just set the value to half of the multiply node. In this case, it would be negative 6.5. Then I'm going to use the second multiply node to turn the effect on and off. 1 is on and 0 is off. I'm going to animate this value by pressing I over the input field. At frame 100, I'm going to set it to 0. Then at frame 1, I'm going to set the value to 1. The combined XYZ node at the end allows me to confine the effect to a single axis. I'm going to rotate this to be upright for lighting and camera purposes, and you may have noticed that the texture is tiled all over my mesh. I want it to be spread out over the entire tile set, so I'm going to add in a Realize Instances node. This will increase render time, but it also spreads out the pattern just like how I want it to be. Lastly, the texture. The reason I have this texture on this mesh is actually because I forgot to create a new material when I created that flattened cube at the beginning. But let's say I either have the wrong texture or no texture at all. To fix that, you can put a set material node at the end there and then select your material. Let's talk about some of the variations I made, starting with the ones that only have one row or column. And really quickly before I show you how I did it, try to think of how you might do this without adding any nodes. I think the easiest way to do it is to unplug one of these multiply nodes at the beginning and set the value to one instead. This will place only a single vertex there and then you can resize the tile with this transform node. For the variation where I've got an image texture, I set that up in the shader editor. I just used object mapping and then a mapping node to move the image into place. I've also got some random translation going on in this setup. So I've added a translate instances node just after the instance on points node. And then I set up a noise math notes and a combine XYZ just like before, and this time plugged into the Z input. If you want this translation to be unaffected by the rotation going on as well, Make sure you uncheck local space. 
I think this one looks really cool, especially when it's just barely misaligned. I think this only scratches the surface of what you can do with a setup like this, so I encourage you to try playing around with it. But if you spend time with this, you can create something really cool. Let me know if that was a little fast for you today. I tried to edit things a little different just to change things up. Uh, let me know if I missed something or if you did. Thanks for watching.